Welcome to the Pimp Your Brilliance podcast with Monique Malcolm, a show about leveraging your existing knowledge, unique skills, or passion to build a thriving creative business. I aim to show you what's really possible when you stop letting fear have all the fun and start taking action towards your goals. You can learn more about this show and subscribe for updates by visiting PimpYourBrilliance.com. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of Pimp Your Brilliance. I'm so glad that you're here. This is episode number 104, and you can find show notes at pimpyourbrilliance.com backslash 104. Now, today's episode is kind of a mashup of a previous episode. I was going to rebroadcast episode number 25, where I talked about content pillars and how to brainstorm content ideas. And I, I aired that show way back in like 2018. So when I started reading through the content, it was still good content, but it needed some major refreshing and updating. And so I decided to do that. So instead of rebroadcasting that old episode, this is a refreshed version of the episode, basically updating the content ideas and providing a little bit more context about this strategy that I'm going to share in today's episode. So, you know, just a heads up. If you've been listening from the very beginning, some of this may be familiar to you, but it's not the same episode. The main thing that I want to focus on today is how to generate stellar content ideas that attract the right people and make you look like an expert. Because as I've been talking over the last couple of weeks about creating content that sells, we've already talked about diversifying your content strategy I also shared a few tips to help you create content that's going to sell. And the main thing here is just making sure that we're creating content that's focusing on the needs of our audience, what they're looking for, what they're searching for, basically solving problems or helping them make those mindset shifts that we talked about in the previous episode. So I want to actually get into how do you come up with content ideas? Because sometimes that really is a challenge. With so many things that you have going on in your business, figuring out what you need to be writing about or posting about probably isn't something that you feel overly excited to do. Sometimes it can feel like another chore that we have to do for our business. But there is a way to make this really simple, really quick. And if you follow the three steps that I lay out today, I assure you that you can plan an entire year's worth of content in an afternoon, you know, if you did it without procrastinating or scrolling Instagram, but it wouldn't take you nearly as long as you probably think it would. Bonus points, this will also make you look super knowledgeable and that's what you want. You want people to stumble upon your website and be so impressed that they stick around consuming your content and hopefully making their way into the top of your funnel because you have a funnel, right? Shake your head, nod your head. Yes, you should. And if you don't, I invite you to go back to episode number 101, where I laid out a really simplistic sales funnel that you can use to sell your digital products and related offers. So definitely check that out and I'll link to it in the show notes. But in this episode, I'm going to be sharing how to use content pillars. So we're going to talk about content pillars and how you can use those to generate endless content ideas. This method not only helps you generate a nice idea bank, but if done right, it will help you do a better job of selling your offers. And it helps you create tons of relevant on-brand content, which is a win-win, making sales and then also having content that's on-brand and helping people make their way down their funnel. Your funnel is truly like chef's kiss. This is what you want. So let's start with what is a content pillar? And you know, I like to define things for you. So content pillars are three to five topics that your brand covers in depth. It is high value. It's evergreen content. And these are topics that your brand talks about consistently and amplifies on your chosen platforms. So whether that's your blog, your podcast, social media, these are going to be content. These are going to be topics that you cover repeatedly, almost to the point where you feel like you're beating that dead horse because you're talking about it so much. But don't worry about that. You keep talking about it because this is how you get to be known for a specific thing. You have to continue to talk about it and kind of make that name for yourself. And by using your content pillars, this is one way that you can do that. 
Content pillars provide knowledge that your audience is actively searching for by offering practical advice, tutorials, and tips. And they can also be topics that you cover in your signature offer or your signature product or even webinars. Your brand's content pillars should be focused on topics that you really want to be known for. So this is a good way to gain clarity around your niche. You can also become that go-to expert on one specific topic or even a few related ones. So you don't have to just be like a goal-setting expert. You can be that goal-setting expert that maybe is also well-versed in productivity and time management because those topics are interrelated. One major benefit of establishing content pillars for your brand is that it makes content planning so much easier. Instead of trying to figure out what to record for your podcast or post to social media or what reel to make, you can use your content pillars to build out an editorial calendar for yourself months in advance. And I highly recommend that you do this because posting by the seat of your pants is really not a great strategy, number one. But two, that's how you become burnt out because you're always constantly trying to figure out the next thing to post, the next thing to post, the next thing to post, and you don't have any plan. You're not allowing yourself to batch or really giving yourself breaks, and that leads to burnout. When you've planned in advance, you can plan how you want to create your content and what kind of timelines you need to do it, and then you can batch content. You can figure out ways to outsource it. You can figure out ways to repurpose it to stretch that content out even longer, but that is the advantage of planning. You don't have those same advantages when you are trying to just post all the time in the moment. So let me give you an example of a content pillar. So let's just say one of the topics for your brand that you cover is goal setting. So a few ideas for some subtopics that you could cover are how to set a goal. What is a SMART goal? Five tips to set goals you'll actually achieve. Apps to help you track your goals. The best goal setting planners. Hint, hint, the Visionary Journal. Um, Or ways to stay focused on your goals. Each one of these subtopics can be a separate piece of content. And they all point back to the overall content pillar of goal setting. So that's really how content pillars work. You take one topic and you slice it and dice it into as many subtopics and different angles that you can come up with. So once you have your content pillars, you can cycle through these topics on a consistent basis. And you're never going to have to start from scratch trying to figure out what to post or find content ideas because you'll have a topic that you can cover from many different angles. You can cover it from positive angles. You can take a controversial stance or you can add your own insights or your own experiences into these different topics. I personally feel the most important thing to keep in mind about your content pillars is that you have some type of interest in these topics. Because again, this is going to be a topic that you are covering in every way that can be covered because it's a core part of content that you're creating. So definitely make sure that the content pillars that you're choosing are topics that you actually like and and have some interest in covering. So let's get into these three steps because I want you to quickly brainstorm these content ideas and start building up your content idea bank so that you can start creating all of the content that you're going to need for your brand. So the first thing that you need to do is choose three to five content pillars. If you were to sub the word content pillars for categories, you would be choosing three to five categories for your brand. And I think that is a really good number because it's it's not too many that it dilutes the, what the main topics are that you cover, but it's enough to give you variety and some nice related content pillars so that you can talk about a mix of things that are all interrelated and help further your goal of attracting new customers or attracting new audience members. So three to five. Four is probably about the sweet spot. It's right in the middle. And we'll talk about why four is a good amount a little bit further on in the episode, but that's going to be your aim. Three to five content pillars. These need to be topics that are relevant to your audience, but also in alignment with what you want your brand to be known for. As I mentioned, the more that you dive into these content pillars and you talk about these specific topics, the more that you're going to make a name for yourself and become known for certain things. 
So make sure you're walking that line of relevant for your audience as well as in alignment for what you want to be known for brand wise. And then there's a few things that I think you should keep in mind while you are trying to decide what these content pillars are. And those are your audience. So we kind of talked about this. Who is your audience? What are their needs? That's always the place that we start. And then thinking about your business's purpose. So how do you help your audience? And then finally, your goals. So how is the content you're creating going to move you closer to the goals that you have for your business, whether it's selling certain offers or selling certain programs? You need to think about your goals. But those three things combined will start helping you narrow in on what content topics you should be covering for your specific audience in your business. And then once you've decided on the content pillars, I want you to add them to a spreadsheet or an Airtable base if you're using Airtable and start beginning to create a content bank. So this does not have to be hard or fancy. Literally take a spreadsheet, have one to five columns in that spreadsheet. And at the very top of each column, put your content pillar and then bold it. And there you go. You have the beginning of an idea bank that you can continue adding to over and over and over and over again. So step two, you're going to build out your content pillars with subtopics. So now that you've decided on your main content pillars, it's time to build out that idea bank. So you're going to use your content pillars to brainstorm subtopics and different angles that you can talk about. So I gave that example earlier showing you what a content pillar was and some examples of subtopics. But again, just taking that one topic and trying to chop it up into as many different angles as you can. One quick way to do this is to use a keyword search tool like Answer the Public to help you generate a list of questions that people are searching for related to your pillars. I've also talked about in the past using the autocomplete feature in Google search. So typing in your content pillar and seeing what other um, options come up under autocomplete. A few other ways to boost these ideas One is to listen to your audience. I'm a big fan of asking your audience what they need to know and who knows better than them because they are your audience. So send a survey to your audience and ask them what topics they'd like to learn more about. If you don't want to do a formal survey, then you can use the same concept on most of your social networks by creating polls or tweeting about it, asking in your captions and telling people to comment on what they want to know about or directing people to DM you with questions that they have about XYZ topic. Whatever you need to do, gather as much information as you can and make a list of the frequently asked questions and then add those to your idea bank. So boom, you have more things that you can talk about, create content around, post videos, podcast episodes, whatever. Another thing that you can do is review your analytics. When in doubt, see what's already working. Reviewing your analytics to see what types of content is already resonating with your audience is a smart practice because you don't need to reinvent the wheel. If you go through your analytics and you're noticing that certain types of posts are receiving more engagement than others, well, make note of that. And your analytics does not have to be only limited to website analytics or let's say YouTube analytics. Almost every single platform that you are using has some type of analytics built into it. So make a note of what type of visual content is getting the most engagement. What captions are you writing that are really resonating with people? If you've been tweeting about something and you're making threads and they're getting lots of reshares and lots of comments and likes, then that's a good indication that these are things, topics that your audience really wants to know more about. So make a note of that and add similar content ideas to your idea bank spreadsheet. So that way, again, you are capitalizing on what you're noticing is already working. No need to create something brand new. Just do what's already working and getting your results. Step three, use your content idea bank to plan out your editorial calendar. Now that you have generated all of these amazing content ideas, when are you going to publish them? This is how you start to get ahead with your content creation, by using your idea bank to plan out the next 30 to 90 days of content. And I know that sounds like a lot, 
when you have to think about planning it all at once, but you can break it up. And this is just really figuring out what content needs to be published on one, what date, and then making a plan for creating that at, in that time frame. So with your content calendar, this should be a mix of long form content, emails, and social media. My three-step content strategy looks like this. Number one, I focus on foundational articles. So these are longer pieces of content, blog posts, podcasts, YouTube videos that I want to rank in search engines. Then I move on to building trust and nurturing my audience by sending engaging emails. And then finally, I sprinkle in a bit of social media content for my favorite platforms. So this probably sounds familiar because this is my content cake framework. Remember, starting with foundational articles, then we do email, and then we do social media last because those are the sprinkles. And if you want to learn more about developing a content strategy, then I suggest that you listen to episode 102, where I talked about a simple way to diversify your content strategy. After you've laid out your content cake in your your editorial calendar, the next thing to do is to add tentative publishing dates for each piece of content that you plan to create. Once you've done that, you need to work backwards from your publishing dates to figure out when you're going to create the actual content. Keeping in mind that long form content is going to take more time, so you need to plan appropriately for that. Social media content usually does not take as long, and a lot of times you can batch things like that. So batching, finding all the images, writing the captions, By following these three steps, you can fill your content bank and plan for an entire year's worth of content. So let's do some quick math. So if you have four content pillars times 13 ideas or subtopics, that gives you 52 topics. That's one new content idea a week for an entire year. So it really is that simple. Now, here is the part that people get caught up on. I gave you all this great information a a really simple way to generate a ton of content ideas, but you need to take action. That's your next step. So what I want you to do is grab a notebook or open up a Google Doc and write down some ideas for your content pillars. Then take those ideas and share them with your audience and see which topics they're most interested in learning about. You don't have to overthink this. I just want you to get started. So Don't spend a lot of time spinning your wheels, trying to come up with the perfect ideas, come up with a handful of ideas, and then put them out there and see what people say, and then take the next step forward. You just need to get started here. That's that's what's most important. And if you're looking for a space to hang out, you want to ask questions, or you need community support, we would love to have you join us over in the Brilliance Lounge. We're actually working with a few members right now to help them get their blogs up and running. So if that interests you, brilliancelounge.com is where you'll find that information. And if you enjoyed this episode, I would love to have you share it with a friend. I've discovered something really neat. If you are listening to the podcast via Apple Podcasts, you can actually text the show to a friend directly in the app. So just a heads up next time you're listening, share it with a friend. Because sharing really is caring. And most of all, I just appreciate you helping me spread the word about the show. And that's all I have for this episode. So until next time, go out there and pimp your brilliance.